Hey all, this is Sam Rob, samrob2020.com, and I'm here with uh, Kenneth Blevins, and uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about the presidential race for the Libertarian Party, and uh, Kenny is a, is a fellow uh, presidential candidate seeking the Libertarian Party nomination, so we're, we've got some questions for each other. This is the first chance we've had to sit down and talk one-on-one, -on -one, uh, especially you know, given what's been going on with uh, COVID-19 and not being able to meet face to face. So uh, I'm looking forward to a chance to, to learn a little bit more about him and about what, where he, uh, where he comes from and what he stand, stands for. So Kenny, you want to take a few minutes and introduce yourself? Uh, I guess. <laughs> That's why we're here. Huh? Uh, well, you know, my name's Kenneth Blevins and I'm from uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma and my internet connection is unstable apparently. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh so uh for a living i'm a pipe welder pipe fitter and i work at a little a local small shop around tulsa but uh, apparently a bunch of dogs in the back also but that's fun <laughs> yeah but uh yeah i got i got into the presidential race i got tired of looking at who had run and who had run in the office and thought that there were very good choices they didn't really fit me very well and i thought maybe i could i could give people a better option to uh, choose for uh, that's pretty much what i'm running uh, my main topics are pretty much uh i'd like to see term limits in congress you know they say that you know power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely and that seems to be the system we have going right now is people have been up there so long they've had so much influence and uh, so much power and got used to that and so they pretty much just try to dictate what what uh we do because of what they want instead of what is better for us and better in our lives so uh, i'd like to see term limits and i'd like to Kind of reschedule to re, uh, orientate, you know, how they're paid. Uh, I think they're paid too much as it is. And when you get in all the benefits they get from uh, just, you know, we pay them and then we pay a little bit extra here, and a little bit extra here, and a little bit extra here to go towards the stuff that we are, we have to pay on our own if we're, you know, an employee or employer or right independent contractor so we should treat them more like that and see uh, if they can live like we do instead of uh living off of us uh work for us but yeah. and that's pretty much basically what it is and i don't really have much of a political background <laughs> i've uh pretty much kind of go with the common common sense of uh you know I do what I can to live my life. I don't want to dictate how anyone else lives theirs. But as long as you're not hurting anybody and the way you live your life, I mean, whatever makes you happy. Yep. And that's that's kind of interesting. We've got, uh, I mentioned last night, uh, I was talk, talking to uh, my friend Justin. He's from out, out towards Iowa. Uh, he and his wife, Sarah, were on for uh, this COVID community discussion that I've been uh, doing and going back and forth with some people. And, uh, one of the things that I mentioned is that we've got a political class that is geared towards uh, being very efficient at getting out and getting the votes and getting out and getting contributions. And when push comes to shove, uh, a lot of times you find that they just don't, especially in those past few months, they just don't seem to be up to the job. Um, I don't know if it's a lack of common sense or uh if it's uh you know kind of an, it being insulated from the you know the, the harsh realities of the world like you were talking about but you get people who don't understand uh that they you know things that sound good may have additional repercussions one of the things i mentioned was uh i think it was in illinois somebody was talking about uh closing down uh veterinary services as being non-essential which for somebody who's got yeah you know, I, I know you've got a a background out there uh, you know, you probably, you're, you're in an area where you probably understand that, uh, yeah, you know, you've got cattle ranchers, you've got fa hog farmers, you've got, uh, dairy farmers, uh, veterinary services are actually essential. 
that I mean, very, life, very life sustaining. Yeah. yeah. Um, so there, there's a disconnect there that uh, that I think possibly actually really needs to be addressed. Um, so uh, one of the things I wanted to ask you uh, specifically is what what drew you to the Libertarian Party? And I can I can kind of guess. You said you know, you 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 mentioned just the, at the end of your statement there if uh, if nobody's hurting somebody else you you know they're fine with you you can get along with them. And that's a very libertarian attitude. But what is it that brought you to the party and made you say, "Yeah, this is this is where I want to draw a line." I just kind of reading the platform, and you know the the non-aggression, the you know kind of live and let live, and those you know I have friends and family that are from all in, all sides of the spectrum. And it just seems to be that, you know, they get so bickering about, oh, you need, we need to do this or we need to do that. What do you need to do for yourself? And what can you do to help someone, not by force? You know, just the taxes and tax code like that. You know, that's all, all force based. And, I, you know, we need to go to a more voluntary system. Okay. Uh, actually being human being and helping people out. Okay. One one of the things I just want to let you know, Ken. Uh I went ahead and uh I stopped your video on my end and hopefully that'll that will help a little bit with the with the connection quality. Um I know we're we're going across the country at a time when everybody is trying to get on the internet and do video chats. So uh you know it it's uh useful to to be able to, you know, reduce your bandwidth sometimes so i'm going to go ahead and stop my video as well so so now we're uh we're just having a conversation here um yeah. so it's like a phone call only it's over the internet and very hideously complex <laughs> 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 um but i'm still still recording it so we'll, we'll get the we'll get this up at some point um so what would you say uh you know, compared to, compared to the other libertarian candidates, my, myself, uh, you know, I had somebody ask me today, what are your three big issues? And uh, reduce, for me, reduce the size of government, eliminate taxes, and uh, probably the one that I think differentiates me a little more from, from the other candidates is uh, reform in immigration. Uh, I'd like to see us go back to an Ellis Island model of immigration where if you show up and uh, you're, you're healthy, uh, you're not going to be a burden on society, and uh, uh, you're not a violent uh, criminal, then hey, we're we're happy to ha have you here and and uh, you know get you, get you integrated into American culture and and uh, help you succeed because when you succeed, we succeed. Um, that's, I would say that that's kind of my 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 differentiation, my big thing is my focus there. Uh, and a little bit personal because I have uh, uh, three adopted children and uh, you know work in an industry in, in technology where. Uh, I've interacted with a lot of people from various different cultures that come to the United States and want to be want to be part of America, so and, and want to be Americans. Um, so, what would you say your you know your main thrust of your uh, your campaign is? What do, what are your three big issues? Before I touch on your immigration policy, because I think that's just about the perfect way to do it, uh, and that's I haven't got talk about immigration much, but that was that's pretty much the same same stance I have as far mm -hmm. as, you know, it, it's not completely open borders, but you have some vetting coming in and right. you're allow you're able to allow people to move freely back and forth and, and have people come in, but you still have that accountability of who you are, where you're from and what you're here for. Yeah. So, if you if you think uh, about it, that's uh, yeah, we we do that all over the place, anyways, right? You get, you go into if you go into a hospital, somebody asks, you know, who, are, why are you here? Where are you going? And it's not that they're trying to, yeah, you know, that they're they're trying to be nasty about it. They're they're just saying, hey, you know, we there's reasons we want to know where people are, um, largely because they want to be sure that the people who come there are being helped. Um, so I, th I think uh, you know that sort of going that sort of route is a is yeah. a little bit of a change in talking about 
how we look at immigration and, and not that we want to keep people out, but when they come in, we want to know they're here so that we can help them. Um, we, 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 we don't want to keep people out. We want to be able to keep people safe. Yeah. And, and that's, and I mean, that's help them out if they need it. And yeah, yes. that's, that's more the, uh, more the right I go is we don't want to keep people out. We want to keep people safe because and, unfortunately there are people out there that, that don't like America and don't like Americans and want to do mm-hmm. a farm. But and there's not, a lot not of even, good people that want to come here and, and help us out and, and make the best life they can for themselves, their families. And it, it's a mutually beneficial, beneficial uh, arrangement. Yep. And, and not even, not even in terms of just uh, keeping Americans safe, but keeping, keeping immigrants safe too. You don't want people to be preyed upon. You don't want people to be uh, to be mistreated or uh, dis- you know you don't want anybody deceiving them. Um, I was in the I was an officer in the United States Navy, and uh, one of the things that we got got warned about when you you went to uh, went to your first command is uh, you want to watch out for uh, various organizations and uh, various various places uh, that would spring up around the naval bases where they said, oh, we've got a bunch of 18-year-old kids coming straight out of boot camp. They're single. They're getting a regular paycheck for the first time in their life. And they really don't have an understanding of how things work. And I mean, very, very legally, they would just prey on these guys and, and fleece them. You know, and say, oh yeah, you know, a twenty percent interest uh, loan for a car is, pra- you know, you're practically you, you know, you're living on base. You can spend your entire paycheck on a car, um, that sort of thing. And uh, you see the same thing on college campuses. Yes, with, uh, credit absolutely. cards. Yep. Anytime, anytime you have uh, someone who's unfamiliar with the territory, you want to, you, you want to protect them. You want to keep keep them and keep keep them out of harm's way and keep them from being preyed upon by people who would abuse them, definitely. Um, so, uh, g- going on, uh, I guess next question. Next question for you. Um, uh, I really didn't answer yes. that one. We went back to it, but uh, pretty much my yeah. big main main three is you oh, know right. like, like most libertarian candidates, you know, reducing the size of the federal government. If we mm-hmm. can reduce it back down to the size that, of the constraints of the Constitution. Okay. And then delegate the powers that aren't given to the federal government to the states. We can make things run a lot more efficiently. And I mean, Absolutely. And it'll benefit the people that you know do pay taxes. I mean, unfortunately, we can't eliminate all taxes and still run any kind of government, whether it be federal, state, or, which would, it'd be nice if we could. But mm-hmm. uh, you know, people gotta get paid somewhere. Okay. I mean, I guess then- I guess we could if we didn't pay anybody, but. <laughs> the uh well that, that's that's we could, we could start with congress <laughs> make congress a volunteer position yeah exactly um, yeah that's that's uh now would you would you consider this is actually what i was going to ask you next uh so it segues nicely would you consider yourself to be a a constitutionalist a strict constitutionalist i i, I think that's probably about where i lie is like a constitutional libertarian maybe okay someone had to ask me i mean you know i said i'm all for the voluntary but like i said uh, throughout history people have always went to tribal or state or you know some kind of a a group organization with a high party mm-hmm. right and no matter i mean from, i mean there's very few people that you know there there are some that are individuals and don't want to be seen with anybody, don't want to see anybody, just want to be out on their own. But the most part of family groups, you have a hierarchy and you, you band together. But, uh, you know, so I think the people that wrote the Constitution were very intelligent men. And uh, they saw this and they, you know, thought that, you know, the whole Constitution wasn't to make a perfect government to make a more perfect and written right there. Mm-hmm. So and as far as the constitution goes and the way that it is was originally designed, that might be the most the best you're gonna get to having individual liberties and freedoms but still being able to protect and serve populace that that you're you're uh, well you're supposed to be servants of you're not 
not really governing, but you know, you're you're a servant of those people. Yeah. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna throw something at you that uh, this is actually uh, Adam Kokesh's point of view. Um, I, I I think I'm accurately representing his point of view. Um, and I know I know uh, several other people have echoed some similar sentiments. Uh, Arvin uh, is fond of saying that this society has given us the government that we have. If we were to get rid of this government, uh, this society would recreate it. Um, and I think I think Adam would agree with that. That uh, hey, if you go back to the Constitution, it's obviously we we there were some problems because we've ended up where we are now, even with the Constitution. So. Obviously, you've got an uphill battle to simply reduce the size of government, to reduce the reach and authority of government. Um, what makes you think that, that if we got back to a constitutional government, a strict constitutional government, that we would be able to keep it that way this time as opposed to letting it grow out of control like we have? Uh, well, I mean, that's where my, where my second big point or well, really with my primary primary focus that I think I'm different from every other candidate is term limits. Right. Uh, power corrupt, absolute power corrupt, absolutely. We have people in Congress that have been there for 40 years or more. People that have worked the government system for, I mean, decades, almost half a century, if not more. And, and I said, it's not supposed to be a position of power. It's supposed to because that's the way it's designed and that's the way it needs to be kept. And unfortunately, you know, as, as a population, we get, uh, we uh, have people who get complacent and either they don't care or they don't feel like being involved as much. And that kind of allows, allows it to get away. So but you think you see term you limits can't. as being a way to keep from from having these professional politicians? And it, and if they're politicians, you're cutting their career a lot shorter, which means yeah. that they're not going to be able to just sit up there and you know make money and funnel money to their friends and themselves that hardworking Americans have have worked and you know. Put their lives and their livelihoods on the line to, to get. Yeah, and that's that's uh, that's interesting. That's one of the things that I find that keeps driving me towards. Uh, I, I I won't say towards anarchism at the, at this point, um, because I I have uh, some objections to the the idea that anarchism at a large scale can work. Um, but well, it's kind of socialism at a large scale. Like, it yeah, doesn't work. It, I mean, any, it, anything, uh, anything at a large enough scale does not work. Right. So I find myself thinking, okay, that's that's why you need you need to have, uh, you need to minimize and completely completely reduce the size of government as far as possible. Whether you're talking about local, you know, local government, state government, uh, federal government, uh, just because. The more, the bigger things are, the more opportunity there is to find loopholes, to find find ways to game the system, and uh, like you like you said, you know, professional politicians, you know, learning how learning how to uh, uh, pull the strings in Congress and and benefit themselves. Um, so I, 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 and that's one of the things I do like about the Libertarian Party and all the different candidates. Uh, whoever whoever does you talk to, we we have different endpoints, um, and different ways we think about going or going about something. Uh, you know, I I listen to Jacob Hornberger, and I think that's a fantastic place. He wants to go there tomorrow. Uh, I think it's going to take take years or decades or or a lifetime to get there. Um, that's that's a big thing I have. You know, with you know, with a lot of them is they want to do it right now. Yeah, and American society is not designed. I mean, a lot of people won't don't want to do anything right now. They they don't like change and they don't like big change. So it's something that we really need to do. And but, it's kind of it's kind of strange to but me. But we have to take our time to do it to get it to get it people to accept. We need to show them slowly that it'll it that this can work. Yes. 
but that's you're, you're not going to hear me disagreeing too hard on. because that's where I've been. Um, I'll, I'll, ask, I'll ask you something. And I, I honestly have not thought about this until until this point, uh, talking with you right now. Um, your average American really doesn't have a whole lot to do with government on a day to day basis. I mean, aside from uh, you know seeing the the police cars out, uh, you know, a, you know, a speed trap on the highway or whatever, um, maybe once or twice a year, you know, I'll, I'll renew a license, renew my DM, my my license at the DMV or car registration or you know paying taxes or whatever. I don't really have a whole lot to do with government, so I find myself wondering, you know, if things were to go away, would I really notice them? And is the reason that, that it's a problem now that, that we, have, uh, we have such an extensive system of media and news that, that you know, even though you know, we'd say, oh, you know, hey, yeah, I, you, know, you could take away this government program and I'd never, you know, 99% of Americans would never hear about it. Uh, we have a new system that says, okay, we're going to make turn this into uh, a huge issue because conflict sells because that's how we get our eyeballs and get our ads. And um, do you think that that the, maybe the media is, is part of the problem here in terms of magnifying the issues and and making it seem like oh you know you can't get rid of any government program? I think they're a big part of of magnifying the issues on that. Like you said, you know, you you want a program that or eliminate a program that helps you know 0.05 percent of the population, which can be done that can be done at a voluntary local level. Right. But for some reason, there has no design to do this, which means that. The money goes to, go, to to Washington, goes through all these hands, goes to the goes back to the, you know, where it's actually supposed to use that at a much, you know, lower percentage than the one it came in at. Yeah, yeah. Just it's just in but somehow, but somehow, somehow the government's helping you out by wasting your money. Yes. You know, <laughs> I've I've always you know, I have I have friends that you know. Uh, are are into you know I'm not gonna say animal, I mean they're in animal rights but they're not you know uh, I have a friend that's into big cats and stuff and he always talks about you know if you're going you know it, it's great to donate to 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 help animals out but you need to do local you know the mm -hmm. the big national you know ASPA ASPCA PETA all that stuff they're not really interested in helping the animals out. It's the local, you know, donate to your local uh, animal shelters. Lo mm -hmm. Donate to your local, and that's your money's going to be spent a lot more efficiently that way. Okay, you mentioned, no, I have to, you, I have to bring oh, this up. You I, mentioned I big cats. You I figured you did. You, you mentioned big cats. So, okay, what, what is it? Like, was it Tiger King, or is it Lion? Yes. Tiger King? Yeah, Tiger King. Do, do, you, do you know Joe Exotic? Have you met Joe Exotic? I do not, but the okay. guy that the guy that I was just referencing was there whenever Joe Exotic bought his first actual big cats. Seriously, oh, that's yes. it. It is a small, small world. And his Man. name is Sam. Oh, really? <laughs> that is amazing. You can well, you can always trust a Sam, so that's good. Yeah. Cool. yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. So that, uh, we. One of the things when I uh, started started running and starting getting involved with the with the party was uh, I'm not I'm not going to say what it was that that, uh, that caught me by surprise, but uh, there were some things that when I started started uh, delving into the Libertarian Party and understanding more about uh, you know different types of libertarians and and who was running and who they represented. Um, that uh, some things took me by surprise, uh, you know, things that I honestly was not expecting, um, and I had to kind of, kind of, you know, rearrange my worldview a little bit to accommodate accommodate some new ideas. 
Uh, in your your campaign and your running, uh, what have you encountered that's made you stop and think and have to and maybe have to rethink some of where you stand or what you you know what you were what you believe? Yeah, part of it's just been you know, like I said I've always thought of a smaller government would be better, but just to one extent, you know, mm -hmm. to what size can we minimal, minimalize the government and still have it be functioning to work for us and have it have its proper role. And I think it's a lot smaller than I originally thought. <laughs> <laughs> it does tend to shrink. Yeah. There's uh. I, especially you find when you find yourself uh, hanging out with the with uh, folks like Dan Taxation and Steph Berman, and uh, with thinking thinking, okay, how uh, he might have a point here, uh, you know, or or uh, talking talking to someone like like Berman, um, who honestly is a you know we, we've both met him. He's a he's a interesting character. He's a he's a, a fine fine guy. Uh, we'll give you the shirt off his back. I'm pretty sure. Um, he, yeah, he. I mean, I haven't met none of the libertarian candidates I've I've met have ever. I mean, have really been anything more or anything less than fantastic people. You know, yeah. Berman. He's he's a, he's an amazing. He's an intelligent, great guy, funny. You know. Yep. And. He's kind of an anarchist, but what's wrong with that? Yeah, uh, no, Dan. It, it is, Dan's it is an extremely yeah. bright guy. You know. Oh yeah, yeah. Great at marketing. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, we mentioned Adam Kokesh earlier. Yeah, smart guy. Uh, former yeah. military like yourself, and just you know, mm -hmm. and and to sit around and talk to those guys. I mean, it. Like I said it does. They have a way to try to make you, you know, try to get you. To, to think the way they do and uh yep it's a challenge it, 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 it's a challenge yeah it's, but it's it, it's a it's a good one it's a it's a good challenge to have yeah and it's, it's one of those things that uh i try you know i i mention this occasionally i, I i'm not i don't try and hide it um but i also don't don't try and specifically campaign on it that uh, that i'm a christian and uh one of the phrases that always comes to mind uh, after having a conversation with with some of the other libertarian candidates, some of, some of the other uh, libertarian folks like like Thomas Squeeter, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, well, why am I blanking? Mike Shipley, <laughs> I just talked to Mike Shipley the other day, um, is uh, the the biblical the biblical uh, proverb about how, how iron sharpens iron. Yes, you really need. Uh, you need a couple of people really going at it sometimes to sharpen each other and to, to, to help your argue, help hone your arguments and, and uh, refine your point of view. And uh, sometimes you, I think you find that uh, uh, in, in helping, helping each other, you know, and, and challenging each other, uh, you end up with a lot better, uh, a lot better argument, a lot better understanding of the issues. And uh, that's that's something that I really really appreciate in the in the Libertarian Party. I, I felt very rewarded uh, just getting involved and, and being able to talk to people and uh, discuss some of these ideas with them. So we're uh, we're coming up on nine o'clock. So we're all just about wrapping up here. So I'm going to give you the floor and ask you. Anything, anything that you would like to say in conclusion or any, I mean, anything that you'd like to talk about? Do, do we have to stop at nine or can we go a little bit longer? I'm having fun here and there's a lot of stuff that, you know, uh, I haven't really got a chance to ask you a lot of questions. Uh, and, you brought oh, okay. up, and you brought up being a Christian. Uh, I am also a Christian. Uh, Ken Armstrong is also a Christian. Yes. I know all these. And, uh, you know, and some of the, uh, you know, more right wing people that, that say they're, you know, conservatives, Christians might look at the Libertarian, libertarian Party and especially some of the, the diversity we have in it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, 
you know, as far as, you know, the LGBTQ uh, community and uh, what is your, how has being a Christian affected your thought on that, if any? Mm-hmm. Or what, what do you have that, uh, you know, a Christian faith makes you more? That's, and that, that's interesting. It's, it's definitely been, it's been strange. It's been a challenge. Um, uh, I have uh, given some, some public speaking advice to, to individuals talking about uh, uh, going, to, going to talk to people about uh, legalizing sex work. And I, that was actually based on some of the stuff that uh, I learned as a preacher in communicating, communicating truth to people. Um, the it's one of the things that I, th- I think kind of uh, if you're a Christian and a libertarian and you're serious about it, uh, it actually bolsters your arguments and makes you more real because I can I can look at someone and say, you know what, I as a, as a Christian, I you know, absolutely I don't I don't think that uh, uh, going going out and getting getting your brain fried on hard drugs is, is good. I don't th- I don't. I don't think that sex work is uh, is necessarily good for you. Um, I believe it has a price that you know, that that you pay in terms of in terms of your body and your mind and your soul, spiritually speaking. Um, I can I can look at look at uh, you know some other things and say you know what I don't I don't agree with I, with what what I think you're doing personally, or or in a religious sense, in a in a, in a, uh, a biblical sense, and I find myself coming back and circling back to those arguments and ultimately say, but am I willing to have someone kill you over that? Because that's what government force is. That is saying, hey, I believe so strongly that something is wrong that I would rather see you uh, arrested, imprisoned, your life ruined, or you killed for resisting than allow it to go on. And the more I, the more I look at things like that, the more I think, you know what? As a Christian, my point of view needs to be that that just like with government, that subset of uh, you call call them crimes, call them natural. You know, maybe we've got natural rights. Call those natural crimes. Hey, if you murder someone, deprive them of life. If you if you uh, kidnap someone, deprive them of liberty. If you defraud someone and, and deprive them of happiness. Those are things that we should fight and that, that we should consider serious enough to, uh, to warrant that kind of intervention. For somebody making a decision about how they want to live their life, if I can't convince you with my words, then if I can't convince you that my idea or my, my viewpoint is, is the correct one, then either I need to refine my viewpoint or I need to look at it and say, is this the, am I arguing for the right thing? Um, I, think, yeah. I, think, I think you're spot on there, and uh, yeah, I lost. yeah, you can't, you can't. Like that, and is a judge. Yeah, you can't, you can't, uh, you just, you reach that point where, you, where you think, okay, this is, yeah, you know, if if I'm going to be honest about it, I need to, I need to, uh, I need to make that sort of decision, and then. Uh, I think when you really start looking at it, you realize that that's, you know, that's where, where your Christian faith kind of kind of comes in, because you're saying, you know what, my my goal as a Christian should be to reach people with the good news, with the gospel of of, of salvation of, of of salvation through Jesus Christ, and I can't do that. If you, I can't do that if if I'm saying if I'm saying, you know what, you should be murdered for what you're what you're doing right here right now. That's 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 impossible. I'm saying I'm saying that it's better for you to die uh, in your sin and and go to hell, in my viewpoint, than it is for me to tolerate your behavior and and to continue to try to reach you. So as a Christian, yes. I look at libertarianism and say, you know what, that is, that's perfectly compatible with where I am, with what with what I believe. Um, and uh, yeah, that's one of the reasons why I'm why I'm where I'm at right now, as opposed to uh, continuing on with the the uh, Republican Party or Going with going with uh, something like the Constitution Party or or whatever, so. 
I will say as a fellow libertarian and a fellow Christian, I strongly agree. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, uh, it's, it, it is surprising. I, I honestly thought when I, this is one of my surprising things. When, uh, when I got involved in the, in the party and get, got involved in the campaigning, I was afraid that I was going to be a very lone uh, pine out in the, out in the wilderness. And uh, as it turns out, pretty much every, uh, every place I've gone has been, uh, you know, I found, I found fellow Christians. Uh, every place I, I've gone, I have found uh, those who uh, either believe differently or have, uh, have, you know, an antipathy towards faith personally in their life who were still welcoming and, and, uh, and happy to have me there because we have, uh, we have a philosophical agreement at least um, that allows us to coexist in, in the uh, in libertarianism and the non-aggression principle. Um, I think that's tremendously valuable. I think that's something that, that, uh, that we've kind of lost in America over the last, uh, last few decades that we need to really get back to. I cannot uh, disagree on any of those points. So, uh, one, one of the one of the hardest things about being a libertarian is there's just so much uh, agreement on many topics. It is, yes. So, the, it's, hard, the, uh, it's hard to debate whenever you like. No, no, no. I, yeah, I can see where you're coming from. <laughs> yes, and 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 you know we we do. That is that is a good thing. Uh, we do agree with each other a lot. Um, it's it's actually if you if you watch the uh, the Republican debates from 2016, you watch the Democrat debates from from uh, from this year, you see a lot of the same thing going on there, right? They they agree in gen, in in broad brushstrokes, they but they may disagree on details, yeah. um, and uh, I think you see the same thing in the Libertarian Party. And that's not bad. Yeah. That tells us that we do have a good foundation. That tells us that we do know where we're going. Where you know, in a lot of cases, we're just arguing about uh, how we're going to get there and how fast we're going to go along the way. We have a good destination. We just have different paths. Yes, and uh, I and I think uh, you know some some people are uh, a lot more. Uh, enthusiastic and think that the American people are going to be a lot more enthusiastic in, in uh, blazing a trail. I think uh, other people like, like you and I uh, tend to favor a more incremental approach because uh, we've got, we've got people who have uh, in the country who, who know about Liberty, but, but are still, it's far enough removed from them that they, they uh, it's still a little, uh, a little bit scary. Uh, and I think we have a chance to reintroduce the idea to them that, that liberty is their sol the solution to their problems rather than uh, the cause of their problems. And uh, right now, you know, the American people are uh, really unique. I, think, I, I still think we're very unique people in this world. Uh, we, are, we are a nation built on ideals and ideas uh, as opposed to nationalities or language. Um, so I, you know, I think you know, as long as we can keep that and uh, keep moving forward in that direction, keep those ideals at the forefront, um, we can we can continue to to grow and to, to prosper as a country. And I, I want to emphasize too that one of the things that uh, uh, one of the things that I, I hear criticism about is is people saying that we failed to live up to our our ideals, um, which is absolutely true. But that's the reason they're ideals. They're supposed to be goals that are that are out there that we keep on striving for, that we have to work at day by day in order to achieve. The fact that we that we don't achieve them perfectly doesn't mean that we give up on them. It just means that that the next day we keep on keep on trying a little bit harder to make sure that we, we are still working towards those goals. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I got, yeah, I got a little bit on my soapbox. There. <laughs> you did, you did. Hey, it, it, it's your, uh, it's your uh, Zoom here, so I'm, I'm not, yeah. gonna, I'm not gonna stop you. It's ours, but, man. It's ours. We're, yeah, we're in okay. this together. Okay. And, and the other, the other question I have, I, I posted the other, I posted it 
er, earlier today or yesterday mm-hmm. was a yeah. You know, once, once I mean the the biggest lies I always hear when I tell people I'm a libertarian, I'm running I'm running for president as a libertarian, is you know well a, a third party if you vote third party your vote doesn't count, or you know if you vote third party you're just voting for Right. You're, you're, yeah. you're, you're, you're voting for the other candidate, the one I don't like. Yeah. You're, you're, you're hurting my candidates. How do we get people to quit believing that lie? Oh, geez. That, and, and that's, that's a hard one. That really is. Because, um, because that might be one of the biggest lies in politics. Yeah. I, sa- I saw a lot. <laughs> that is. That is. Um, that that is firmly that that's firmly in the idea that there there's two parties, uh, and it it really it's one of those things that's kind of insid- insidious because you think about it, you've got if you've got a uh, you know, we're big, we're a nation that's big on sports. If you've got a football game going on, you've got two teams. If you've got a basketball game going on, you've got two teams. If you've got a uh, hockey game going on, you've got two teams. Uh, you know, soccer game, even two teams, baseball game, two teams. It's always it's always one on one. So the, there's this idea I think that kind of slips into into our psyche that that uh, yeah, politics is the same thing. You're going to have two teams going up against each other. Um, when in truth, we really want it to be more like a bracket. We want it to be more like more like the March Madness, right? Where, it's more of a oh, it's more of a, conf- a conference championship instead of just a single game win. Exactly, exactly. If we, I think, if we can get that get that across, um, that that might help break through some barriers. Um, getting people to understand that, and uh, Max Abramson actually uh, was was very big on the idea of, uh, for example, go, going into a blue state. And convincing uh, Republican voters there, hey, you know, your voice is not being heard, so why not work with us to elect libertarian candidates? Because we share some. We, there's there's definitely a lot of things that we share in common. Um, or going into going into a red state and talking to uh, Democrats there and saying, hey, you know what? You're anti-war. We're anti-war. You're you're pro marijuana legalization. We're pro legalization. You you're for uh, criminal justice reform. Hey, that's where we, we've got people working on that too. We've got candidates, so that's a, that's a big core part of their issue. Uh, we can work together. So why don't you? Why don't you instead of, instead of continuing to fight the the uh, Democrats, why don't you throw in with us and and we'll try and provide a, a very stark contrast to to the the uh, Republicans in the in the next race. Um, so I think there there is something to to be said for doing that for trying to reach. Uh, voters uh, trying to just convince voters in general that it's it's you know it's not a not just a one team you know red team versus blue team battle, uh, but uh, also convince them that yeah um, you know sometimes sometimes you know what uh, if if uh, you know I'm from Pittsburgh my team's my team's the Steelers and uh, if we end up going and yeah we end up going to the Super Bowl uh, absolutely I'm going to be pulling for the Steelers. But you know what? If uh, if they get knocked out, and uh, you know we're going up against the Patriots, I'm gonna I'm gonna be rooting for whoever's playing the Patriots. <laughs> you know, so, so there's something to be said for that. Yeah, what's, the old, can, what's the old saying in sports? My favorite sports team is whoever's playing the Yankees. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, hey, can, yeah, it can, it can be the Harlem Globetrotters playing the Yankees, and I'd still root for. Yeah. Um, no offense to any Yankees fans out there, uh, Patriots fans. Uh, if you want me to explain the joke to you, I will. You know, get in touch with me. I'll use small words. Um, there we go. I just completely tanked any opportunities I had in New England. <laughs> um, but yeah, trying like try to it, try, try like, trying to say that you'd explain it using crayons, but you're you're afraid they eat them. <laughs> no, no, I need to save the crayons for my marine buddies. Um, <laughs> The, the, uh, yeah, the, but the, reaching people, reaching people's heart, whether, whether you're talking, talking about, uh, uh, 
it, whatever, you know, however you're doing it, whether you're talking about reaching them as a, as a Christian, reaching them as a libertarian, uh, reach, reaching them as a, uh, an advocate for, for some cause you believe in, um, it's a lot of work. And it takes building a critical mass to get to the point where you can say, okay, now we have, uh, now we have a voice. And I think it, for, uh, for us as libertarians, um, I think we, we really need to be focused on, uh, on getting to the point uh, this election and then the coming elections where we can, we can hit a tipping point of at least uh, getting at least 10% of the vote. And I know that's, that seems you know, like hideously impossible in some ways, but in, in all actuality, um, that's you know, at 13 to 15 million people. And uh, if if you you spread that spread that out, uh, you know over uh, over the number number of states we have, and and you're ta you're talking you know a few hundred thousand people here, if, and, you know uh, half a million people there. Um, we sh that's something that we should be able to do, especially in this environment uh, when we we've got uh, uh, Donald Trump, who is you know. You know, when you when you're when you're talking about him, he's he's done some some decent things, but honestly, we could do it a lot better. And you look at you look at uh, you know they're run, running uh, Joe Biden up against them, that everybody on the on the left there is holding their nose, and you know even more so than the last couple of elections. And uh, you know you go back go back even further, and you can say, okay, yeah, you know what, uh, you know, Obama. I honestly think that there there are some things that he did that I, that I was like, okay, you know what? I don't agree with a lot of your policies, but but uh, I think you were right there. And uh, but it's still it was a matter of voting for him versus voting for uh, Democrat light and Romney. And that's what drove me to the Libertarian Party. As a matter of fact, was was uh, realizing that there was no neither of the parties was interested in making any sort of real change. Um, and I think we're we're seeing over the last. Uh, eight to eight to twelve years, uh, just a lot of people realizing, you know what? If 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 we don't make some sort of change, we're going to be stuck in a situation where uh, you know, half the country is just going to hate the other half, and there's never there's not going to be any getting out of it. Um, and if it, I mean, if the only solution there is just to tell people, you know what? Why don't you elect like a libertarian? Then you can all hate us. Right, we'll, we'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but then at least you'll be talking to each other again. We can we can be the healers in chief, as Soren uh, uh, Ardena likes to say, uh, and uh, we can we can be the 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 ones that unite the country, even if it's just against us. Yeah, I mean, you know, like I said in Philadelphia, I, I'm the one, I mean, I'll put that I'll put that that bullseye on my back if I have to. Yeah, you know, I'm not I'm not sure that anybody that Actually, if, if if someone truly truly wants to be president, I don't know if they're the right person for the job. I think it's it's more of a, a a job where you have to. It's more of a sacrifice of yourself than trying to get yourself onto, you know, that large stage. Yeah. And I'm I'm not a hey look at me guy and a guy, and I I and I think you you've noticed that about me. Absolutely yes that I'm not, Hey, look at me, but I'm willing to sacrifice myself for what I believe in. Yeah. And then going back to, uh, you know, the, the wasted votes, I, I like to say, you know, well, if you, if you're in a, if you're in a, a red state and you vote blue, then you're pretty much wasting your vote. So not, why not vote for the, for a party that, is actually going to give you a different, uh, another choice and help keep that party, help get that party at ballot access or keep ballot access opposed right. to throwing away your vote for someone who you're really not behind anyway. Yep. So. And, and speaking then, of ballot uh, access, the, uh, I, I want to take chance, take chance to plug a uh, group on Facebook called uh, hashtag open the ballots. And uh, that's something that uh, Mike Shipley and uh, Henry Connolly and, and a few other folks, have, uh, myself included, have, have uh, gotten involved in. And we're trying to uh, kind of create a, create a, a 
something that's a little more of a grassroots call for uh, changing, especially right now, changing ballot access laws. Uh, you know, COVID-19, right? You can't go out. You can't collect ballots. You've oh, got yeah, people, man. Yeah, it's impossible and, right now. And, and you've got states like Pennsylvania and Illinois and, and Georgia where uh, in order to be, you know, to get a candidate, or get a third party on the ballot, uh, you have to go out and collect signatures. That's the only way to do it. Um, so we're trying trying to uh, get get some people talking about that and start to try and start to make noise and see if we can get some get some support from people behind this idea that hey there's an in, there there's an injustice right now it's directed at third parties um, and uh, if you do that that gives you the opportunity to talk to people about where we are what we believe and and try and get them on board so. Hey, that's my plug. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I said it today on on Facebook on a comment that you know, uh, trying to get on the debate stage or ballot access is like, you know, going to your grandparents' house and and wanting to play with your with your older cousins and they're playing keep away. You know, you got two older cousins, <laughs> and you know, they they grabbed your hat and you're trying to get your hat back, but they're playing keep away with it. Well, that's the yep. that's the two party system there. And the best way, the best way to, to ensure that one, one of the two wins is to keep the third option out. And that's mm-hmm. what I think is the, the biggest form of voter suppression is that, you know, well, I'm not going to let you vote because you didn't take five minutes to change your voter registration. It's you either have to vote for this guy or this guy or not vote at all. Right. Yeah. And that's voter and, suppression to me. Yeah. It's, it's really you know, how how is it any different from uh, you know hey you're you're voting in uh, you know vert, voting in a uh, communist country where they say hey you, here's your choice you can vote for for comrade A or comrade B right um, there's there's no difference in that no. happening here not at all not at all not at all and uh, it's it's hard because ballot access isn't you know it isn't a sexy issue. It isn't something that gets people riled up. It's about signatures and petitions and and validating, you know, forms and and all that. Um, but you know, it's one of those things that's it's kind of important to understand that democracy and and being able to voice your opinion and and uh, and vote for your candidate starts at that level. Um, it starts very at a very basic level where. Uh, just getting on the ballot is an issue. So, okay. So, um, I'm at this point. We've gone on a little bit longer, uh, which is fine. But uh, I do need to. I do need to get downstairs. I promised uh, my girls a game night tonight. So, oh, I'm, I'm sorry to keep you. No, I, no, no, I, was no. a little late, I was a little late getting on, having to try to get everything uh, organized you know on, on the computer. So I haven't I haven't heard my uh, my youngest come up. She goes down to the basement to work out. She's a sports junkie, so uh, she goes down to the basement and works out every evening. I haven't heard her come up, but she she's probably going to be coming up soon. So, okay. anyways, kind kind of thank you for being on. Uh, thank you for 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 coming to talk for a little bit. And uh, like like you said, we have we have a lot of points of agreement. That's a, that's a good thing. Uh, we have a lot of, but we also have a lot of a lot of work to do uh, going forward uh, as you know as individuals as a party and uh, in reaching people and, and getting them to understand the libertarian message. So, and I'm glad that we've got people like you uh, to work with in, in making that happen. Uh, the feeling is mutual there. I, uh, I think you're doing a great job, and I appreciate you having me on. And uh, I'll, I'll plug myself just a second. Uh, if you Please want to go to, to, to Blevins, the president, Blevins for President 2020 on Facebook, uh, my campaign uh, uh, website is blevinsforpresident.org, and you can go to either of those, find out more about you know kind of what I want to do. Uh, and just like I said, I think I think the biggest thing is we need to we need to get our message big enough that people take notice, but soft enough that they're they're not too scared of it. 
So yeah. uh, we have to we have to we have to have a big message, but incorporate it into a way that people are willing to uh, take the chance on it. And I think that is that is that is fantastic. I think that's dead on. So, anyways, thank you, thank you for for again for being on, Kenneth, and uh, uh, hopefully we'll get to see each other again soon. Um, we're hoping that this this whole COVID nineteen thing resolves and and uh, we all get to go down to Austin for the convention. But uh, if that doesn't happen, then uh, then hopefully someday soon we'll be able to to uh, get together again and, and sit down and and talk in person. So. You have a wonderful night, sir. You too. Thanks for having me on, Sam.